in this video, I'm going to switch out the factory head unit to the 2008 Nissan Versa with this aftermarket head unit with the touch screen. Not this particular one, but you know what I mean. Now, if you haven't already, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment below. I don't mind it. I enjoy actually answering those questions. The stock head unit had some complications when I was installing it because the previous owner had a aftermarket iSimple system. iSimple was very popular among people in the early 2000s mainly, I would say, because that's where I usually saw it in cars. But the iSimple system, it uses an FM transmitter that transmits directly to the radio and that's a really neat system because you're not dealing with a lot of static, you're not dealing with any of that. The problem is it has to be hardwired into the car. Everything all in all went by so smoothly. The only problem I really did have was the fact that these brackets were bent for this radio. And if you're putting in an aftermarket radio system, I recommend just getting new brackets or getting some from a car at the boneyard. Only because if you get one from a car at the boneyard, let me tell you, you can bend them, you can flex them, you can do whatever you want with them. But since I used the $45 radio, that's no issue whatsoever. I don't care what happens to the radio as long as it works. So without further ado, so here's our let's stock head it. unit. It's got no aux, it's just a radio with a CD player and nothing else. And we're gonna remove the stock head unit from the car and we're gonna do it very safely and have some fun with it. Small 10 millimeter socket and ratchet, we're just going to disconnect the negative battery terminal from the car. So then we don't worry about short circuiting anything, even though mine is very much plug and play as anything. Okay, just pop it up and off. We're going to pop this up. This comes up and forward. So we're going to use a small little pry bar tool, a nylon pry bar tool, and carefully get underneath the molded foam and plastic insert here. Kind of just you hear the little pop there? Use my thumb, kind of hold it up. There we go, another pop, and we got a pop. Now we're gonna pull from the back forward and pop it forward. And we're gonna try and do that without it falling on me. There we go. There we go. There we go. Pop it forward. Make sure this foam is still set in line. You want to add a little glue to that to hold it in place. That's a good idea. But here's the back side of this piece, and we've got it off. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, there's two Phillips head screws right on each side of the top of the radio faceplate here, bezel, whatever it is, the piece of plastic that's in front, the fascia. You have one here and one here. We're just going to remove those. There's one. Here's number two. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this piece here and kind of add a little leverage to it to kind of just pop it, the plastic clips off. And you're gonna wanna do it very carefully and take your time. You hear the clips just popping? You want to do it just one at a time. You don't you shouldn't have to pry it at all by any means. It just it'll come out. There we go. All right, there we go. It is up and out. It's going to be kind of hard to see. What we're going to do is we're going to pop this forward just like so. We can unplug the hazard lights but not the airbag light. There's a little pin on the bottom, a little plug, and it'll slide right off. There we go. And then we can undo the hazard light switch. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna pop that off using this nylon tool. I'm gonna take the clip at the bottom, kind of open it up to push the passenger airbag light switch right out. You gotta be careful because you don't wanna pull too hard and you don't wanna set the airbag off, the airbag light off. Usually I would use a, a, a better tool than this, but in this case, I'm just using that. There we go. 
both of those switches are out the airbag light is aside we don't have to worry about it at all hopefully that's always my biggest fear is having the airbag light come back on when you do something all right this is off now there's an aftermarket system in here as well and it's a simple radio system but we're not using it so we're just going to set this up here for now and pull this radio out and we're going to remove this old system in favor for the new radio head unit that airbag light harness not disconnected there is four screws or there should be there should be four screws right there but here's one two and three and four and there looks like we're missing two which means this has been tampered with in some point in its life obviously because it has a simple ready rad system in it we're just going to remove those two screws and this whole unit should pop right out okay whoever did that they tighten them way down Move the second one. Number two. I'm going to just pull it straight forward. Nothing else. All right, there we go. Radio out. There's three connectors on the top here. We're just going to pull those out one by one very carefully. There's one. Pop this one out carefully by pushing in on the pin and releasing it. Same for this one, let's pull it back and out. All right, there we go. Factory radio is out. I'm gonna see where this module is. They install a whole eye simple in this. Oh, now I'm really worried. Who installed it? Goodness gracious. Okay. Talk about a hack job right there. Ooh. Move that tape and we can see that it's soldered in there. It's just a tap solder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it right there, right at the power and then retape it. Boom. Right like that. Perfect. I, I recovered it. So we're going to try out the new radio. When talking about wire harnesses, Typically, you would want to get a wire harness that matches the car so you're not putting these wires into the factory harness because once you tear that up, there's no going back. But with this, it allows me to connect all the colors up perfectly and then take this whole unit as one and plug it into the car in the radio. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to solder the speakers and then I'm going to solder the power on off and everything to the car. Wire harness is all together. I'm gonna to wrap it around with electrical tape. So then this is one piece, and then this is one piece, and then if I need these, I'm gonna put an end on each one of those for the parking and the video out. One and two, just like that. Then this goes into the car, this goes into the main connection this is for the antenna and this all gets plugged into the car now let's go out to the car and start installing this early 2000s goodbye what what channel did it want me to tune to 87.9 and 88.3 that's the channel that it was tuned up like i would know that i don't even think the original owner knew that all right now we're going to plug in the harness that i made for this car right here we're gonna plug that in goes right in sweet sweet okay take the radio antenna find the antenna wire connect those just like that then look at the clean job I did on this. Yeah, look at that. Look at, if I gave a car back to a customer, I'm not gonna give them a bunch of wires. I'm gonna make it look nice. Crikey. Okay, nevertheless, we're not gonna use this connector here. 
because that's for this car. Because Nissan wants to use uh, star bits or Torx bits and the rest of it's Phillips. Like, come on, Nissan, are you really serious right now? It's like all I'm thinking. Are you serious? The thread in. So we are we are golden here. Using the screws that came with the radio, I'm just going to use the screws and plug them all together. Put it all together. Now that all the screws and all brackets are put on, we're going to test fit it. Make sure it fits. Looks like it fits. And we're going to test it out to make sure that it turns on and functions. Plug it back in. I apologize if it's kind of hard to see me. The antenna wire, plug it right into the back. Just like this. Then just tuck it all in the back. Just like that. There's a lot of space back here, so... In a Versa, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to really tuck stuff back there. Here's number two. All right, radio. I'm going to take all the crap that's on here from the previous owner. I'm going to go cut all this out. Side, install the negative battery terminal or the negative battery cable right there. I'm going to turn the car on and see if we have sound. Let's see if the radio turns on. Okay. We can see that the radio is coming on. It says Nissan. I'm going to pair my phone to it. Let's see. I got Bluetooth on. It paired immediately to the car. Now before I start finishing everything up, I'm going to make sure that the bezel fits just fine. Or at least fits in the slot. All right, we're looking a little up. We might have to make a few minor adjustments. Put this all back together, just like so. Put that in there. Bring this up. Kind of... It looks good, it fits. The problem is the brackets don't fit. Even the ones that they supply you with, they don't fit. So you're sitting here playing a freaking game trying to get this thing to fit. Okay. Well, I mean, it connects, it pops on, I can see it, it looks good. It just means I have to shave either the top or the bottom a little bit of material to kind of take a Dremel to it and clean it up so I can get the thing to close. All right, looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna reinstall the two screws on the top. There's one. Here's two. It's an interesting, interesting, it's the best way I can say it. It's pretty interesting there. And then we're just going to slap this on here, just like that, and it clipped into place and we're good to go. Radio's installed and we'll get it set up in just a little bit. After finagling it back and forth for a long time, even though this is a Chinese radio, it's one of those radios that is kind of universal to all cars. and. Unfortunately, the lines don't line up perfectly, but it's not to the point where it's noticeable. I did have to bend the brackets, if not, then and in making my own brackets. But the interface works. I get radio. You can do all of these things. I can go back. If I turn the car off, radio shuts off. So I mean, we're pretty good. And then if I turn it back on, 
to accessory, the radio turns on, gives me a nice hello and a welcome. Nissan logo, because this is a Versa. And then we're back to this. We have Bluetooth, Explorer, all that stuff, as well as AUX. So, I mean, for what it is, not too bad. Right, so it wasn't hard to replace the original head unit with that aftermarket head unit. Now, mind you, when you buy those Chinese head units, they are kind of iffy. I mean, they are designed to fit certain cars and not specifically this one. So there might have to be a little bit of fabrication. Other than that, I had no issues with it. It went right in, right out. I didn't like the iSimple unit that the previous owner had installed and because it just, it was poorly installed, I would say. Other than that, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Leave a comment below and stay safe. Hopefully we'll get through this in normal life again. And yeah, I mean, yeah.